This is Town Square Sunday On Demand. And now, 1420 WBSM's Jim Phillips. Joe Ritter from the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center back with us for a look at some program schedule for April, May, and beyond. Welcome back, Joe. Thank you so much, Jim. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, sword fishing is something we see more and more of here on the South Coast. In fact, it's been happening around here for quite some time. That's right. Uh, but no one seems to talk about it a great deal. Sure. So leave it to the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center to shed some light on the commercial aspects of sword fishing. On April 11th at 5 p.m., the uh, New Bedford uh, Fishing Heritage Center will kick off a new exhibit on commercial shellfish fishing. It's a free event. That's uh, right. And uh, Joe, why don't you tell us about this new exhibit? Sure. Yeah, it's been a whirlwind of activity at the uh, Fishing Heritage Center the last couple of weeks. So we last weekend we waved goodbye to the uh, sea monster exhibit that we've had up since last July, popular. and very popular. I'm sorry to see it go. That was my first exhibit I worked on here at the Fishing Heritage Center. So okay. I wiped a few tears away from my eyes for that one. Um, but we're going to be opening up a new exhibit um, next Thursday about the history of commercial sword fishing right here on the South Coast. Now, if you talk to fishermen in this area, past and present, you'll know that sword fishing is a remarkably popular fishery here in Massachusetts. Um, fishermen have been hunting swordfish in this area, primarily with harpoons, um, for over 200 years until it transitioned into a, into a longline fishery in the middle of the 20th century. Um, but it remains a really significant fishery for fishermen here um, in the New Bedford and South Coast region. And that's a story we've wanted to tell for quite some time. A number of the fishermen who help us out and volunteer at the center um, used to swordfish back in the day. So it's a real privilege for us to be able to tell their story. Um, so on Thursday, April 11th, starting at 5 p.m., we're going to be opening this new exhibit to members of the public for absolutely um, no charge for AHA night. What are we looking at? Photos? Mm -hmm. That's right. So we're going to have, we're gonna have um, a, a number of photos and um, media displays set up for people to, to explore the change of gear and technology used by fishermen here on the South Coast as they transitioned from harpooning to long lining. Um, so we'll have photographs, we'll have video images, we'll have some actual artifacts on display, we'll have some sword fishing harpoons and harpoon darts. We'll also have a um, what's called a pulpit, which is where the harpooner would stand to hurl his harpoon at the swordfish on the vessel, and it extended right off the end of the bowsprit. So we'll have a uh, swordfish pulpit that was donated by a former um, fisherman here, retired Captain Louis Baptiste, who owned the uh, FV Rebecca and Rachel. He'll be donating that, and people will actually be able to stand on the pulpit just as they would have back in the day to harpoon and sword fishing. Just like this postcard he gave me. That's right. That. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, a picture of a, a gentleman with a harpoon uh, scanning the waters looking for swordfish. That's right. It's been it's been such a treat to, to research and uh, for this exhibit. And one of the most exciting things about it is um, you don't just have to take my word for it. Throughout the exhibit, we've included QR codes with links to um, oral history interviews that we've conducted with um, sword fishermen, past and present. So you can read about uh, the history of sword fishing, and then you could hear um, in their own, fishermen in their own words talking about their experience hunting the South Coast for swordfish. How much fish. sword fishing is happening out of the port of New Bedford now? Not as much today as there used to be. Mm. Now it's it's sort of a fishery that um, has lost popularity over the years. So not as prevalent today, um, but still still something that I think people enjoy doing and certainly it has a it has a big market in the uh, sport fishing as well how long would the exhibit be up so this exhibit will be up through the end of september 2024 All right so again you can stop by the uh, new bedford fishing heritage center and uh, catch a glimpse of the exhibit it's free and it'll be up till september so you know you've got some time here but uh it is uh you know, 38 Bethel Street in New Bedford, the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center. Now, that exhibit will be followed on the same night, mm -hmm. April 11th, with a roundtable discussion about sword fishing. Uh, I imagine some of the people you talk to to research will be taking part in that. 
That's right. Yep. We'll be bringing down a couple of uh, retired fishermen who uh, swordfish throughout the 20th century. So they'll be coming down to share stories of their experiences, um, what it was like working on these harpoon vessels, what that transition from harpooning to longlining was like. Um, it, as I mentioned before, you know, it was during the research phase, talking to these fishermen about their experiences was just a treat. And they really come alive talking about sword fishing something they clearly really enjoyed. So I think that enthusiasm is really going to come through that night. And again, this roundtable is free. It starts at 6 p.m. The exhibit opens at 5, the roundtable mm -hmm. at 6. And uh, so if you want to know about sword fishing back in the day, that's right. Uh, these gentlemen will be on hand to, uh, to tell you about it. Any notable names taking part? So we um, we've got a we've got a small VIP list at the moment that we're that we're still hoping to build. But one of the one of the fishermen we're going to have um, hopefully be able to speak that night is uh, his name's Captain Rodney Avila. He's always been a humongous supporter of the um, of the Fishing Heritage Center. He leads he leads walking tours for us. He he helps at a number of our events, and you'll get to uh, see a number of photographs um, of the whole Avila family throughout the exhibit. All of the Avalas, they went sword fishing back in the day on the vessels they own. So he'll, the Avala name will come up quite a few times during the exhibit. Right. We know Rodney well. Hope he's, uh, he's doing well. He is, okay, yeah. Great. That's great to hear. Um, the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center uh, each year has some wonderful programs that cater to children. The next one is during the April school vacation. Mm -hmm. The Go Fish Vacation Camp for fourth graders. Now, unfortunately, the application period is closed. Uh, we, I'm sure they'd like to be able to take 200 kids, but that, yeah. it's just impossible with the space they have. But uh, tell me about, um, tell me about uh, the, the camp itself. What, what's going to be happening there? Sure. So the April Vacation Camp, it's called Go Fish Vacation Camp. This is our second year that we've hosted this camp. And it's, uh, it takes place during the April vacation um, from April 15th through April 18th. Through that. So that's Monday through Thursday. And essentially each day of camp, campers learn about a different fishery. So on Monday, they'll learn about ground fishing. On Tuesday, they're learning about lobstering. Wednesday is scallop day. And then Thursday, they're learning about oysters. Um, so it's a, it's a camp we host in partnership with the uh, National Historic Park here in town. Um, and... Through a variety of art and craft activities, kids are able to learn about these fisheries. They'll take a few field trips to the Fishing Heritage Center. They're going to an oyster farm on Thursday. It's always a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. it seems like uh, quite a busy agenda there. That's great. Um, now, look, you have camps throughout the year. Mm -hmm. uh, this camp, uh, applications have run out, but how can families get involved if they want to do something, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, during the summer or... Uh, February vacation or April vacation, how can uh, families get involved? Sure. Well, as you said, we try to offer things throughout the year for, for a variety of age groups. Like you said, this camp was specifically just for fourth graders. Over the summer, we're going to be offering our Something Fishy summer camp, which will have two sessions in uh, starting in July, and applications will go out for that um, hopefully within the next couple months so people can be on the lookout for that. Um, the best way to always keep in, keep on the lookout for our events and camps that we run throughout the year um, is to check out our website calendar, to follow us on social media, or sign up for our uh, electronic newsletter that goes out each and every month. And those are all those are all free, and we try to update those regularly with all of our programming and events. You're listening to Town Square Sunday. I'm Jim Phillips. My guest is Joe Ritter, who's the program's manager at the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center. Joe, the uh, Fishing Heritage Center has a free event coming up on May 9th. Mm -hmm. That's an AHA night. That's right. It's called Into the Archives. Uh, you wonder, is the, is the Fishing Heritage Center, has it been around long enough to accumulate archives? But I think that's what you've done. You're pretty good well, at that. Well, yeah, we've, we've, had, uh, we've had quite a bit of luck with uh, members of the community, and we're very grateful to them who have... Um, who have taken notice of the, our institution, who have trusted us to to be the repository for their photographs, um, for their um, for their paper documents, for their for their objects uh, that have historical significance to the fishing community right here on the South Coast. One of the projects that we've been working very hard on in the last couple of years is to um, standardize 
our, and professionalize our archival collection. So uh, last summer, we hired a part-time archivist. His name's Connor Gaudet. He's been working to um, inventory our entire collection. And the end game is to make that collection publicly accessible um, to, to, uh, to the members of the public online. Um, so as part of this event, we're showcasing some of the rarely seen and new objects and photographs from our collection during AHA Night. And then our archivist will be on hand to talk about his project, creating a digital archive for people to, for people time, to explore and research. That? So that event will uh, take place from 5 to 7 on Thursday, May 9th. That's the AHA Night. Okay. Um, so what types of items are we talking about? Give me a couple of unusual ones. Well, it's we've got a we've got a whole bunch of different things. I think I'd say our biggest collections are uh, photograph collections coming from um, John Chuchu Ryan. He's a local photographer of some renown. He he photographed the waterfront for years and years. So we have his entire collection of photographs, and those are of fishing vessels. Those are of people working um, working on the waterfront, whether they're lumpers or whether they're working in one of the processing plants. But they're also just great candid photographs of life on the waterfront mm -hmm. during the uh, during the 20th century and early 21st century. And it just gives, gives such a great snapshot of life here in New Bedford for people to explore. But we've also got, um, a, you know, a number of things that have been donated from some of the some of the old unions. So like caps and um, ashtrays, all of these all of these pieces of memorabilia that just that just bring the fishing community to life, sure. you know. All right, uh, that is May 9th. Now we have three other items to touch on. Yeah. That it's happening in June, July, and August. That's right. But we're mentioning them now because the tickets will go on sale in May. That's, That's correct, month. yeah. Uh, these events are public sales on board the schooner Ernestina. Uh, whoever did this, uh, put this together, if it was you, congratulations. <laughs> if it was others, well, congratulations to them. It's a great idea. Uh, the schooner is partnering with the Fishing Heritage Center. How did this come about? Well, the uh, the schooner Ernestina Morrissey has always been a really big partner for us as we try to meld the past and present of the fishing community here in New Bedford. Um, often when we're doing public programming or if we're leading tours of the waterfront, the Ernestina is always a stop we try to make. And the, uh, the captain of the vessel and the crew have always been accommodating of our um, tour groups and our students and our campers throughout the years. Again, it's making that historical continuity between the past and present with the fishing uh, industry. So we've always wanted to um, expand that partnership. And because Ernestina is calling you know, the state pier home on a more permanent basis, we thought it'd be a great idea to offer some public sales throughout the summer. So as you mentioned, we've got three on the, uh, on the calendar this year. The first being on Saturday, June 29th, the next being on Friday, July 19th, and then finally we've got one on Friday, August 16th. These will all be evening cruises starting at 6 p.m., lasting um, about until 8.30. Um, and tickets for these will go on sale, as you said, in May. The public price, ticket price for members of the public will be $60. Um, children between the ages of four to 17 will get on for $30 and then children under four will be free. Now, I also want to give a plug too, while we're talking about this to uh, membership to the Fishing Heritage Center, because we're offering a special promotion, um, in May. If you are a current member of the Fishing Heritage Center, or if you become a member, you get discounted tickets to that sale. So you'll, so tickets will be $48 then if you become a member, right. which is a pretty good deal, in my opinion. All right. So it is a fundraising event now. Mm -hmm. You'll be raising funds. Uh, That's right. Working with the schooner Ernestina. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dates again, June 29th, July 19th, and August 16th. That's right. Again, these sales from 6 to 8.30 p.m., Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's going to be a great event for you. I, ho I hope it is. I hope I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I hope the weather cooperates and all of that. Is if Will there be rain dates? Uh, there will be rain dates. We haven't announced those yet. We're still working with the okay. Ernestina just to make sure 
the schedules all work out. But yes, there will be there will be rain dead, so nobody will be able to miss out on this opportunity. And again, tickets will be available in May. That's correct. Okay. Yep. So follow us on our website and check out our social media. We'll be posting updates about that very soon. Okay, my guest has been Joe Ritter, the program's manager at the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center. Thanks, Joe, for coming in. We'll see you in a couple of months. Thank you so much, Jim. That's it for Town Square Sunday. Thanks for listening. Thanks also to Mike Roberts and Tim Weisberg for getting this program on the air and on our social media sites. I'm Jim Phillips. Join us next week for Town Square Sunday. Until then, have a great Sunday and a wonderful week ahead.